Have you ever wondered why two people with the exact same genes as an identical twins will have different mental health outcomes? Or why some people will develop anxiety, depression, or PTSD, and others don't, even when they're faced with the exact same circumstances? Well, the answers lie in epigenetics, the science of how our environment, nutrition, and lifestyle influence our gene expression. Well, in today's video, we're breaking down what epigenetics is, how it affects mental health, and how you can use this knowledge to improve your mental well-being. So stay tuned. So what is epigenetics? Well, epigenetics is the study of how genes are turned on or off without changing the DNA sequencing. So think of your genes like a piano, where every key is there. But epigenetics is like the musician or the conductor deciding which notes are played and how the song sounds. This means factors like stress, diet, exercise, sleep, and even trauma can actually influence which genes are activated or silenced, how your brain and body responds to stress, and your risk for mental health conditions like anxiety and depression. So let's talk about why our genes are not our destiny. And this lies in understanding genetics versus epigenetics. So your genes are like a blueprint, but epigenetics determines how the blueprint is followed. So just because you inherit a gene that is linked to anxiety or depression doesn't mean that you'll develop it. Lifestyle choices and environmental factors do play a crucial role. For example, if you have a gene that's associated with high stress sensitivity, but you practice meditation and exercise, you can actually reduce the impact of that gene. Or if you have a gene that affects your mood regulation, but you eat a nutrient-rich diet full of omega-3s and is anti-inflammatory, you may actually be supporting better mental health and negate the potential impacts of that gene. The bottom line is that your daily choices influence how your genes will express themselves. And this gets down to understanding single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs for short, which are small genetic variants with big impacts or big effects. So think of these SNPs as tiny typos in your genetic code. Sometimes they have no effect, but other times they can either increase or decrease how a gene works and epigenetics will determine how these SNPs will actually impact your overall health. For example, having a SNP in the NTHFR gene, like a TT, would mean that you have a very poor ability to break down folate and can affect folate metabolism. And I talked a lot about the NTHFR gene in a separate video, so if you missed that, check it out. But if you have this gene, it can impact neurotransmitter function. However, just because you have a genetic variant like this MTHFR gene doesn't mean it'll actually cause problems because epigenetics can actually modify that outcome. So that's why understanding both genetics and epigenetics is a very important key to improving your mental health. So if you have that MTHFR gene, you probably want to check your folate levels, but also homocysteine to actually see if it's turned on, and if epigenetic factors have influenced that gene expression. So now let's talk about how epigenetics affects mental health. So now that we understand the SNPs, the single nucleotide polymorphisms, and gene regulation, let's explore how epigenetics influence specific mental health conditions. Starting with depression and anxiety, and I'll touch on the role of the BDNF gene, but there are many other genes involved with depression and anxiety. So the BDNF gene, or brain-derived neurotropic factor, helps your brain to grow and adapt. And I did make a video on neuroplasticity that goes into detail about how you can help improve that gene or improve neuroplasticity, so I advise you check that out. But the BDNF VAL66MET gene is a single nucleotide polymorphism, and specifically the MET allele, so if you have MET-MET, can actually reduce the BDNF uh, function and BDNF levels, leading to higher anxiety and lower stress resilience. Chronic stress and trauma can epigenetically suppress BDNF, which can then worsen mental health symptoms and mental health outcomes. But exercise, mindfulness, and omega-3 fatty acids can actually increase BDNF levels 
and counteract these effects. And there are also serotonin transport genes that can affect mood and mood disorders, such as the SLCA64 gene. This controls serotonin transport, which can affect mood and emotional regulation. So a SNP in this gene can actually impact how serotonin is processed. And the short S allele of this gene is linked to higher anxiety and increased stress sensitivity. And early life trauma can epigenetically affect this gene, making people more prone to depression and anxiety. However, regular exercise, mindfulness practices, and a diet rich in tryptophan, omega-3s, and B vitamins can actually help support serotonin neurotransmitter function, decreasing the impact of that gene. And now let's talk about PTSD and the COMT gene, or catecholomethyltransferase gene. The COMT gene plays a crucial role in dopamine metabolism, especially in the prefrontal cortex, which regulates decision-making, emotional control, and stress response. The COMT VAL 158 MET SNP affects how efficiently dopamine is broken down. val val variant equals higher comped activity, which means you're breaking down your catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine fairly quickly. and may be linked to better stress resilience, but also linked to impaired working memory and may even be linked to ADHD. Where on the other hand, the MET-MET variant means you have slow COMT activity, which means you can't break down dopamine or your catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine efficiently. This makes you more prone to PTSD, anxiety, panic disorders, and you have a higher sensitivity to stress. And of course, epigenetic factors like early life stressors, chronic stress, environmental toxins can actually modify the COMT expression, which can further influence someone's PTSD risk. And individuals with the MET-MET-SNP who experience trauma may be more prone to hyperarousal, intrusive memories, and heightened fear responses. However, there are epigenetic strategies to help regulate this COMT gene and how it's expressing itself. And those things are meditation and deep breathing, which will help reduce overactive stress response. And I have a video on the science of mindfulness meditation, uh, which is a really good video that talks about how Meditation actually modulates stress and helps reduce anxiety and also improve depression. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out. But also what you can do to help with the COMT gene is a balanced, rich diet in magnesium and polyphenols, which support optimal COMT enzymatic function. And now let's talk about lab testing and personalized mental health support when it comes to genetics. So understanding how your genes are expressed is key to making informed choices about your mental health treatment and lifestyle. You see, genetic testing can identify the SNPs, those single nucleotide polymorphisms that may impact neurotransmitter function, your stress response, or mood regulation. But epigenetic testing goes a step further, identifying and assessing whether or not these genetic SNPs are turned on or off, and gives us insight into how environmental factors are influencing our gene expression. And so functional lab tests can actually measure nutrient levels, hormone imbalances, and inflammatory markers that can impact epigenetic regulation. So why work with a mental health coach or provider who has genetic expertise in mental health? Well, a mental health coach with expertise in genetics and epigenetics can help interpret lab results and create a personalized plan based off of your genetics, your symptoms, and your labs. And this is what I do. I can guide you in lifestyle modifications, nutritional support, and targeted interventions to optimize your gene expression for better mental well-being. So instead of a one-size-fits-all approach, this allows for precision mental health care tailored to your unique genetic blueprint, and I believe is the future of mental health care. So the integration of genetic testing, functional medicine and epigenetics is transforming how we approach mental health care. So by using this data-driven approach, 
individuals can take proactive steps towards improving their brain function, emotional resilience, and overall well-being. In fact, scientists are developing epigenetic therapies as we speak. There are drugs being tested and formulated that target DNA methylation to restore normal gene function. They are also researching and looking for personalized medicine that tailors treatment based off genetic and epigenetic testing. So while these are still in the early stages of research, epigenetics is revolutionizing mental health care. And now let's talk about how lifestyle choices can modify your epigenetics. Well, the great news is that epigenetic changes are reversible. So here's how you can optimize your gene expression for better mental health. And we're going back to the basics here. Number one is nutrition. Eat folate rich foods, leafy greens, eggs, and beans to support methylation. Get omega-3s in. This is gonna help boost BDNF and reduced inflammation. And you can get omega-3s from salmon, flax seeds, and walnuts. You also wanna avoid ultra processed foods because this can negatively impact brain epigenetics and is very pro-inflammatory. So reducing or avoiding ultra-processed foods is actually very anti-inflammatory. Number two is exercise. So regular physical activity increases BDNF. This improves mood and brain function. Strength training and cardiovascular exercises can help regulate stress genes, which leads us to number three, stress management. Mindfulness and meditation can reduce cortisol-related epigenetic changes, and journaling, therapy, and deep breathing can help regulate genes involved in the trauma response. Number four is quality sleep. Poor sleep can disrupt epigenetic markers involved in mood regulation. So it's important to aim for seven to nine hours of sleep each night and make sure it's restorative sleep by implementing sleep hygiene practices that I talk about in my video on sleep hygiene and blue light blocking glasses. And my last tip, number five, is reduce toxin exposure. See, heavy metals, pesticides, and air pollution can negatively impact epigenetic regulation. So it's important to prioritize organic, whole foods, and clean air environments whenever possible, and try to use the most natural products as possible and products with the least amount of chemicals in them because that can also impact your toxic burden. So here are my final thoughts. Your genes are not your destiny. Your environment and lifestyle influence how your genes are expressed. And SNPs can impact mental health, but epigenetics determines if they will be activated. And you can take control of your genes. You can modify your gene expression through nutrition, stress management, exercise, and proper sleep. So what's one small change you can make today to support your mental health and improve your epigenetic factors. Drop a comment below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.